Hello and welcome to Graduate Monkey. In this video, I'll show you a problem that's based on Saville style diagrammatical reasoning test. Saville is one of the popular formats that uses this type of problem. And here's what problem looks like. So here you've got a set of operators and what effects they cause. Here you have and some illustrations, inputs, process, and outputs. And here's in this section on the right hand, you'll you'll see the problem itself. So this is the problem. So in this case, you're given a set of figures, in this case, three shapes, and then set of operators in consecutive order. And then here you need to work out what you will have in, in terms of output. Okay, so uh, uh, first of all, operator is something that changes the shape to something else. So, for example, operator A changes triangles to squares. Operator B changes shading of all figures. If it's shaded, it makes it unshaded and vice versa. Now, operator C requires some illustration as it's more complex. So, here we look um, at the bottom, we see illustrations. For example, in A, you've got triangles and all of the triangles are changed to squares without changing their sizes, right? So, you know, big triangle becomes a big square, so the shading remains the same. Uh, B, uh, as we said, changes just the shading of all figures. You've got, you know, unshaded pentagon is shaded after the operator is applied, and the circle becomes also shaded, and this shaded square becomes unshaded. C uh, changes actually the any kind of polygon whether it's a triangle uh, whether it's a square whether it's a hexagon only two pentagons so let me show you here here you have a square and it's shaded and became it became unshaded pentagon uh -huh. so not only does it change the shape of polygons but also changes the shading right it doesn't touch circles you see the circle remains the same so in a square, unshaded square became shaded pentagon. Here you've got, you know, a set of triangles, and note that they became uh, they became pentagons. Note the note the size remains the same. In other words, you know, if it's a big triangle, uh, the size, uh, you know, the resulting pentagon will be of, of big size as well. Okay. So here you've got a combination of A and C. So it changed the triangles to squares. Okay. First, it changed them to squares, and then when you applied C, it, it actually changed squares to pentagons. In fact, if you actually had, we didn't have A here, okay, because all of them were polygons, you would have exactly the same result, whether you just applied C or AC. Now, let's focus on the problem. Now, in order to solve the problem, I'm going to use the whiteboard because I would like to illustrate step by step. Uh, what will result after each of these operators are applied. So let me move to the whiteboard now. So here we have the same problem but in the whiteboard so uh, I should be able to better illustrate uh, by writing here, by drawing. So let me redraw that problem. So this is, you've got a small triangle, a big circle and a s large square which is shaded, okay? So this is um, Now you've got operator A first, okay? So let's say operator A is applied. And what we have here is, remember the operator A changed triangles to squares only. So I would have just a small circle, a small square, okay? Circle would remain the same. And the square, which is larger square, shaded square, would remain the same as well. So now operator B needs to be applied. Not that operator B would be applied to the output after A, so I would need to redraw that. So that's going to be, you know, small square, large circle, and large square. So I'm applying operator B, okay? So what do, what do I have? Remember, B changes shading of all figures, right? Nothing else. So it would become a small square, shaded square, and even circle would become shaded, okay? And the large square would become what? Unshaded, because it changes the shading. Now, 
operator C uh, would actually be based on the output of operator B, right? So I would need to redraw that again. So I've got small square, large shaded circle, and the large unshaded square. So when I apply operator C, note that C actually changes the shading as well, right? As well as the shape of uh, the polygons. In this case, I would have then small pentagon, right? Because it changes everything to pentagons. But remember that because this small square was shaded, it becomes unshaded pentagon. Now, remember that the middle shape, which is the circle, remains the same, okay? And its shading remains the same because the C only affects the shading of polygons, not the circle. And this it becomes a large pentagon, large pentagon. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm not really good at drawing, but this is the kind of representative of a pentagon. And note that this pentagon needs to be shaded, okay? Because the large square was unshaded. So then this should be the final answer then, okay? So this is your final answer, small unshaded pentagon, large shaded circle, and large shaded pentagon. And if we look up the answers here, we can see that it's this answer choice A. We've got small pentagon, large circle, and large pentagon. So you've got uh, answer choice A as the correct answer. And that's it. Visit www.graduatemonkey.com to learn more.